Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss and welcome back to this tutorial series on GitLab. In the last video, I introduced you to the concept of the GitLab flow. And in this video, we are going to apply the GitLab flow to the project that we previously created. I talked about two variations of the GitLab flow in the last video. And in this demonstration, we're going to be utilizing the environment branches variation. Before we get started, let's quickly review the learning objectives for this module on practicing the GitLab flow. After completing this video, you should be able to do the following. Sync changes between local and remote Git repositories. Create merge requests. Demonstrate familiarity with the components of a merge request. And apply the GitLab flow in your own GitLab projects. Now that we've covered the learning objectives, let's get started. Okay, so I'm on the home page of my GitLab account. And if you haven't already, go ahead and sign into your GitLab account. And once you've done that, we're going to navigate to the GitLab project uh, that we created in a prior video. Uh, I called, when I created that project, I called mine Moss Test Project. And uh, I'm going to open that project up. Now, you might remember from the previous video uh, when we created this project. After creating the project, we also created an issue within the project. And let's navigate back to that issue. It's under the issues section and then uh, list. And then we only have this single issue in the project called modify the project readme. So let's open that issue up. I mentioned earlier that the GitLab flow should begin with the creation of an issue. An issue helps define the scope of work that needs to be completed. And the scope of this issue is not well defined right now. It just says modify the project readme without um, any additional information to specify what, uh, what should be modified in the readme or how it should be modified. So let's edit this issue um, and update it to be more specific on what updates should be made to the project readme file. So to edit, I'll select the pencil. And I'm going to use uh, some markdown syntax that we haven't seen yet. So if you want to uh, create a checkbox that you can check with markdown, you can use hyphen, open bracket, space, close bracket, and then text. So temporarily, I'll just put high. And then if I preview, I can see that next to high is uh, rendered a checkbox that I can select. Now I can't select it right now because I haven't saved the changes. Um, but you can use this in issues to create like tasks that you can uh, check off within the issue. And for this task, I'm going to say that we should uh, introduce ourselves in the project readme. And I'll select save changes. And GitLab recognizes these checkboxes as uh, subtasks within the issue. And uh, to confirm that, you can see up here, it says zero of one task completed. And the single subtask that we have in this issue is just to introduce ourselves in Project Readme. Uh, so GitLab will actually track uh, how many subtasks have been completed within an issue using these uh, markdown checkboxes. Now, since I'll be working on this issue, I'm going to assign it to myself. And I can just go up here, select edit, and then I can search for a user, but uh, I'm the only user in this project. So I'm going to select myself. And now that we've further defined the issue, uh, let's navigate back to the project homepage. And from the homepage, we're going to create a new branch. And remember at the beginning of the video, I said that we're going to be using the environment branches variation uh, of the GitLab flow. So to create a new branch, I'm going to uh, come down to this uh, drop down here and I'm going to select new branch. And this branch is being uh, created from the main branch and we will call it production. Okay, so this will represent uh, pushing changes uh, to this branch will represent pushing changes to the production environment for um, for our code base, even though this isn't really a code base right now, it's just the readme file. So I'll select create branch. 
and you'll notice that after creating the branch, uh, we're automatically checked out to the production branch or the branch that we created. Uh, so I'm going to switch back to the main branch. Let's take a look at the branches that we have in the repository now. So I'm going to navigate to this uh, subsection here, branches. And we have two active branches. We have the main branch, which is listed as the default branch, uh, and the production branch. In addition to being the default branch, the main branch is also protected, which means that only uh, people in the project with certain permissions can push changes to that branch. And since we're utilizing the environment branches variation of the GitLab flow, I think it's a good idea to also protect the production branch since that represents our production environment. And I don't think um, people should be able to push changes to the production branch unless they are a specific role in the project. And as it says up here, we can control protected branches uh, in the project settings. So I'm going to click on that and navigate to the project settings. And then I'll scroll down to the protected branches section and we'll expand that. And it says by default, protected branches restrict who can modify the branch. So under the branch selection, I'm going to select the production branch. And then we'll select who is allowed to merge into uh, the production branch. And we'll say uh, only uh, people with the maintainer's role can merge into the production branch. And uh, we'll also set the same for uh, people who are allowed to push to the uh, production branch, only maintainers can do so. And the last setting lets us allow or disable uh, force pushing to this branch. And it is a best practice to not enable force pushing uh, on shared branches. The only time it's uh, it might be okay to force push is if you're on uh, an isolated branch and you know that you're the only person working on that branch. So now let's click uh, protect. And now uh, that branch is a protected branch. Should be listed under here. Yep, we can see it listed along with the main branch as a protected branch. So let's navigate back to the project homepage. Although we can modify the readme file uh, in GitLab, what we're going to do is modify it locally on our machine. So we have to get the, uh, the project onto our machine. And to do that, we have to clone uh, the project. So even though it's called a project, uh, behind the scenes, it is a Git repository. And when you want to um, begin working on a Git repository locally on your machine, you have to clone the repository, which will essentially download the code base to your local machine so that you can work on it. And we can clone a repository by copying the clone command specified in this dropdown. And we have two selections or two options. We can clone with SSH or we can clone with HTTPS. And if you remember from an earlier video, we set up SSH keys for our GitLab account. Uh, so we won't be using the clone with HTTPS method. We'll be using the clone with SSH method instead. So I'm going to select this copy URL button. And now that it's copied to my clipboard, I'm going to open up my terminal. And in my terminal, I'm going to uh, paste the command, or rather the uh, SSH URL of the repository or of the GitLab project. And then I'm going to preface it with the command git clone. So the git clone command is what we use to copy a Git repository uh, from the remote source down to our local machine. Okay, so after git clone, we just specify uh, the remote repository. So I'm gonna hit enter. Okay, and it looks like it successfully downloaded the, uh, the project. And it created a directory called moss test project. So if I do an ls, I have moss test project, and if I cd into it, and I list uh, all of the files, I have the .git folder, so that tells us that we are inside of a Git repository, and we have the single readme file uh, that's in the repository. If I do a git status, I'm checked out to the main branch, 
The reason I'm checked out to the main branch after cloning is because it's the default branch. So whatever the default uh, branch is, when you clone that Git repository, you will be checked out to uh, that branch. So to begin the GitLab flow, I have to branch off of the main branch into a feature branch. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do now. And I'm gonna use the git checkout command. To create a branch, I can use git branch to uh, create the branch, or I can use git checkout with the dash B option, which will create the branch and uh, check me out to that branch in one command. And we'll call the branch readme um, hyphen introduction, okay? And you can see in the output, it says switch to a new branch, readme hyphen introduction. And if I do a git status, I can see that I'm on the readme hyphen introduction branch. And now that we're on a feature branch, we can begin making modifications uh, to the code base. And in this case, we're not uh, modifying code, we're just modifying the readme file. And to modify the readme file, I'm going to open it up in Vim, but feel free to use uh, whatever uh, editor you prefer to to modify the file in. So I'll say vim and then readme. And under the first header, I'm going to put a subheader. Okay, so a markdown subheader using two hashtags. And uh, I'm going to call it introduction. And under the introduction section, feel free to put whatever you like. Uh, for me, I'm going to put my name. So I'm going to say a name. Moss, and then uh, activities I like to do, and uh, I like to mountain bike and play tennis, okay? And I'm going to put a new line uh, between the subsection and the bulleted list. Okay, so now let's save and quit the file, okay? And I'm gonna do a git status. And we can see our modifications are currently in the working directory for the readme file. And I'm going to add and commit the changes to the readme file. So I'm gonna say git add readme. Okay, so now the changes are uh, staged. And let's uh, commit the changes. So I'm gonna say git commit dash m so that I can pass in the commit message directly at the command line. I'm going to say updating uh, project readme with introduction. Okay. So now in our local copy of the repository, we have created a new feature branch and we made a change and committed that change on the feature branch. But neither the branch or the change that we made on that branch is currently represented in the remote repository. So if we were to navigate to GitLab and I refresh the page, we're not going to see the branch that we just created um, or the changes that we just made to the repository. And that's because Git is a distributed version control system and we have to sync changes from our local repository uh, to the remote repository. So if we're syncing changes from our local repository to the remote repository, we have to push our changes and we would use the git push command to do so. However, if we're syncing changes in the opposite direction from the remote repository to our local repository, then we pull changes and we do that using the git pull command. Now, right now there's no changes from the remote repository that are not in our local repository, so we don't have to do a git pull but there are changes locally that we should push up to the remote repository. So we're going to use the git push command. And since this branch doesn't exist yet on the remote repository, the uh, readme hyphen introduction branch, we have to pass in the dash u option and specify the name of the remote, which by default is going to be origin. And after we specify uh, the name of the remote and origin is just going is a variable that's resolving to GitLab essentially it's it's resolving to the URL of the GitLab project after we've uh, specified the name of the remote we specify the branch name 
So we're gonna say origin and then readme hyphen introduction. Okay, so we're pushing our changes, the commits that we made uh, uh, from our local branch up to GitLab and we're also passing in the dash U option to tell GitLab uh, to create the readme hyphen introduction branch. So I'm gonna hit enter. Okay, and uh, in the return message, it does confirm that uh, the changes were pushed up and then it also tells me that I can create a merge request from the branch that was just created in GitLab. And you can see down here as well that it specifies that there is a new branch. Okay, so let's navigate back to GitLab and confirm that. So I'll refresh the page. And you can see in the uh, top message here, it says uh, you pushed the readme hyphen introduction branch. And in the drop down list, we can now see uh, that branch as well. And if I were to switch to the readme introduction branch, uh, we should be able to see the changes in the readme file. And you can see under the uh, project name, we have the introduction section and the bulleted list uh, with my name and the activities that I like to do. Okay, so the changes were pushed up successfully and from here we can actually create a merge request and it suggests uh, creating a merge request here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and select create merge request. And on the merge request creation page, uh, you can see in the title, the title is automatically generated from uh, the latest commit a message on the readme introduction branch. So if I open the terminal, you can see uh, where I entered uh, git commit, that was my commit message, okay? And I'm gonna leave the, the title as is. The other thing to notice is the branch that we're merging into. Uh, it says from readme hyphen introduction into main. So why is the main branch chosen as the branch that we're merging into? it's the default branch. So not only does that mean uh, when we clone the repository that will automatically be checked out to the main branch, but also when we open new merge requests, uh, we'll automatically be merging our feature branch into the default branch, which in this case is the main branch. And this also follows the guidelines of the GitLab flow as well. Uh, the feature branches are supposed to be created off of the main branch and then promoted to main and then to some number of uh, pre-production branches before being merged into the production branch. And in the description of the merge request, I'll be a, a little bit more uh, descriptive about the change. I'm gonna say that I uh, updated the readme to include my name and activities that I like to do, okay? Now, if we take a look at the fields below the description field, we have an assignee field, and I'm going to assign this merge request to myself. And then we have a reviewer field, and uh, in this case, I can only assign myself as a reviewer, uh, but ideally, you would always want a second pair of eyes to review uh, the code changes that you're submitting in a merge request. But in this case, I am gonna select myself as the reviewer as well. And then we can specify the milestone, uh, if there is a milestone associated with this merge request. And we can also uh, add one or more labels, uh, project labels to this merge request as well. So this is, uh, labels are used as a way of kind of categorizing changes. So for instance, maybe if this merge request was changing the UI of our application, we would have like a UI project label that we could uh, add to this merge request is kind of a tag that is uh, searchable uh, if someone were to search merge requests in this uh, GitLab project. And then the last two options are merge options. And the first of which is automatically selected, uh, which is delete the source branch when the merge request is accepted. And in this case, we are going to leave that checked because uh, we're merging a feature branch into the main branch. And feature uh, branches are supposed to be short-lived. They shouldn't be uh, long-lived branches like the main branch and the production branch. So we will leave that checked. For the second option, squash commits when merge request is accepted, uh, this one we will leave unchecked. But squashing commits can be a useful feature. 
Uh, basically what it means is that let's say you had 100 commits and uh, maybe there was a large percentage of those commits where you were just uh, fixing small things like adding a semicolon to the end of a statement or adding a comment here and there. Uh, it would be useful to reduce the number of commits and to do that you can squash uh, one, two or more commits uh, together into a single commit if you wanted to. But I'm going to leave that option unchecked and I'm going to select create merge request. Okay, so after the merge request gets created, uh, we're brought to this page with uh, three tabs of information, the overview tab, the commits tab, and the changes tab. And in the overview tab, we have kind of a summary of all of the activities that are happening in the merge request. The overview tab is really where the conversation about these changes will happen. Uh, so we can see the description of the merge request. And in addition to that, we can see other events um, like uh, where I requested a review for myself and I also assigned this uh, merge request to myself. We can add comments uh, from this page as well. And we can also control the workflow of the merge request on this tab as well. So from uh, this overview tab, uh, we can approve the uh, merge request and we can also uh, proceed with merging uh, the branch into the main branch as well. And the approve button is available to me because I'm assigned as a reviewer uh, of this merge request. So I can uh, review it since, or I can approve it uh, since I am a reviewer. But you'll notice that next to it says approval is optional. And for the free tier of GitLab, uh, you can't enforce approval before a branch is merged. But uh, if you have a higher tier of GitLab, then you can, uh, there's a setting where you can enforce that uh, one or more approvals have occurred on a merge request before it, can be a mer uh, before it can be merged. So this merge button would be grayed out if, uh, if that feature was enabled or if that setting was enabled. And if I scroll up and select the uh, commits tab, I get a list of all of the commits that are included uh, in this merge request. And then if I select the changes tab, uh, I can see a diff of the changes uh, that are, are included in this merge request as well. So in the diff that you see here, uh, we're comparing the main branch with the latest version of the readme hyphen introduction branch. If we had made more than one commit on the readme hyphen introduction branch, then we could select an older commit and compare an older commit on uh, that branch with uh, the current version of the main branch. It also shows me how many files have changed and how many lines have been added and how many lines have been uh, removed. And in the settings or the preferences uh, here, I can compare changes in line or in a side-by-side -side view where it will show uh, the main branch version of the readme file on one side and the uh, readme hyphen introduction branch on the other side. Okay, so we have this side-by-side -side diff available to us as well. I'm going to select the inline uh, diff. Now, a very useful feature for uh, reviewers and participants of a merge request is the ability to comment on each line of code in a diff. Okay, so if I hover over each line, I have this uh, comment button and I can add a uh, comment to that line or I can do, as it says, uh, I can drag for multiple, uh, multiple lines. So I can comment on uh, all of these lines from uh, line three to line six. Okay, I can add a new comment for uh, that entire block that we added or I can add a comment for a single line, okay? So now I'm going to act as my own reviewer and I'm going to request some changes to line six. And I'll ask myself to add uh, an additional activity to the list of activities that I like to do. Okay. And I can either start a review or just add a comment. And since I'm requesting changes, I'm going to select uh, start a review. 
okay? And it says uh, submit review, and I'm going to do that. And now that that review has been submitted, I should be able to see it on the, not only in the uh, diff, in the changes tab, but I should also be able to see it in the overview tab uh, as part of the activity. So if I scroll down, now I can see uh, that I started a thread uh, on the diff and I can see the comment that I added here. And since I requested changes, I, as the creator of the merge request, uh, should make those changes, those requested changes. And then when I've done so, I would select resolve thread to indicate to the reviewer that I did make uh, those changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the changes uh, that were requested on the readme file. And I'm going to make the changes locally and not in the editor. And when we make changes locally and we push them after a merge request has already been created for a branch, those changes will be automatically associated with uh, the open merge request for my branch. So let's go ahead and navigate back to the terminal. And uh, I'm going to uh, open the readme file in Vim. And in the activities uh, line, I'm going to add one more activity. Okay. So I like uh, mountain biking, tennis, and going to the beach. All right, so I'll go ahead and save and quit. And I'll do a get status. And I'll add the changes to the staging area. And then I'll do a git commit. Well, actually, let me do a get status real quick. Okay, they're in the staging area. And then I'll do a git commit dash M. And uh, I'm gonna say adding third activity to readme, to project readme. All right, okay. So if I do a git status, I have one commit. Uh, so I'm ahead of the remote branch and it says use git push to publish my changes. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna say git push without the dash u op, uh, option because uh, I've already uh, created the readme hyphen introduction branch uh, in GitLab. And you'll notice in the output of the git push command, now it says uh, we get a message from the remote and it says uh, view merge request for readme hyphen introduction. So it recognizes that we already have a merge request open for this branch and it specifies which merge request, uh, merge request number one. And then if I navigate back to the GitLab uh, interface, we can see automatically in the merge requests, the merge request uh, gets automatically updated with the latest commit that was pushed to the readme hyphen introduction branch. And in the uh, review that I started on line six, uh, GitLab recognizes that I modified this line after the review was started. And so it adds uh, kind of like a reply to that thread saying that Moss changed this line in version two of the diff uh, just now. Since I made the requested changes, I'm going to go ahead and uh, resolve the thread. So I'll select resolve thread. And now if I switch roles to the reviewer, uh, I would just double check uh, that the changes that I requested were added. So I would select version two of the diff and I would review again, uh, review line six to make sure uh, those changes were added and it looks like they have been. So uh, I would go back to the overview page and I would select uh, approve. And then I would merge the uh, merge request. So I'm gonna go ahead and select merge and uh, delete source branch is checked. So the readme hyphen introduction branch should be uh, deleted after we select uh, merge. And then GitLab gives us a confirmation uh, to say that the changes were merged uh, successfully and the source branch was deleted but we do uh, still have the option to cherry pick our change uh, into a new merge request, or we, if we found like a regression, for instance, after merging, uh, we can revert the change, uh, which means that it will basically be undoing the merge into uh, the main branch. Okay, so now that we've merged our first merge request, 
Uh, let's navigate back to the home page. And we're checked out to the main branch. And if I scroll down to uh, review the readme file, uh, we can see that now on the main branch, the changes that were previously on the readme hyphen introduction branch are now included on the uh, main branches uh, version of the uh, of the file. But remember that since we're using the environment uh, branches variation of the GitLab flow, when we merge into the main branch, the main branch uh, acts as kind of like a pre-production branch or maybe a staging environment. So our final destination or the final target branch is the production branch. So we need to make a second merge request to merge the main branch now into the production branch. So to create that second merge request, I'm gonna to navigate to the merge requests section and I'm gonna select new merge request. And on this page, I have to select the source branch uh, and then the target branch, okay? Our source branch, our target branch is listed as main right now, but we know that's not the case. Our target branch should be the production branch and our source branch uh, should be the main branch. So here we're saying we want to merge main into the production branch, okay? So I'm gonna select compare branches and continue. And for the title, I'll provide something similar to the original commit message. I'll just say that uh, we're updating, uh, we updated the readme file with an introduction. I'll leave the description blank and then I will assign it to myself and I will uh, also assign myself as a reviewer. Okay. And then I will select create merge request. And for this merge request, I'm just going to directly approve and merge it. Uh, but it is important to note that for every merge request that we create between two branches, uh, that when a merge request is opened, it should trigger automated testing. And as changes are promoted up through pre-production branches and they get uh, closer to being merged into the production branch, the scope of testing broadens at each level. So when we have a merge request uh, open from the feature branch into the main branch, uh, our scope of testing will likely be smaller than uh, when we're um, merging the main branch into the production branch. So we'll go ahead and assume that automated testing uh, was completed uh, when this merge request was opened. And I'm going to select approve, and then I'm gonna select merge. And merging these changes into the production branch uh, essentially means that we are cutting a release. And to formalize that release, uh, what we can do is create a git tag. So I'm gonna to navigate to the uh, repository section and then I'm going to go to tags. And currently we don't have any tags in this repository and uh, I'm going to uh, select new tag to create one. And I'm going to use uh, semantic versioning and I'm just gonna say v1.0 for the tag name. And then we are going to create the tag, not from the main branch, but from the production branch since it represents our, uh, uh, our production environment. And the tag can optionally have a message associated with it. I'm just gonna say this is the first release. And under the release notes, I'll uh, simply say updated the project readme with uh, introduction section. Okay, and then I will select uh, create tag. And now that we've created this tag, it should have also generated a release in the deployments section. So if I navigate to deployments and then releases, we will see uh, version 1.0 and it gives us the ability to download uh, assets of the source code. Okay, so now we've completed the GitLab flow but there is one last step that we need to do, and that is to sync our local repository with the remote repository. Right now, the remote repository has commits that the uh, local repository 
on my machine doesn't have. So we need to uh, do a git pull from the command line to sync the remote repository with our local repository. So I'll navigate to the terminal. And uh, in my project, I'm going to first do a git status. And when I do a git status, you'll notice that I'm currently checked out to the readme hyphen introduction branch. And that branch no longer exists uh, in the remote repository, it was deleted after we uh, merged the branch into the main branch. So what I'll want to do here is first do a git checkout to the main branch. And now that I'm checked out to the main branch, I'm going to do a git pull. Okay, and so the git pull uh, worked successfully. You'll notice that it also uh, uh, recognize that there was a new tag. So it created a new tag in my local repository. But if I were to execute the git branch command here, you'll see that the main branch exists, but also the uh, readme hyphen introduction branch still exists locally. So we need to delete the local version of that branch. And to do so, we can uh, say git branch dash D readme hyphen introduction, and that deleted the uh, local version of the readme branch. Now that command deleted the local version of the branch, but my local repository still thinks that there is uh, a remote branch called readme hyphen introduction. So if I do git branch dash dash all, it'll show me not only the local branches, but also the remote branches and the remote branches are listed in red. And you see here that the readme hyphen introduction branch is still listed. And to update this list of remote branches, we can pass in an option to the git pull command called dash dash prune. And this will prune uh, remote branches from this list. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna hit enter here. And in the output, it says that it deleted the readme uh, hyphen introduction branch and I'll run the git branch command again and we can see it's no longer listed in the local branches or in the remote branches list anymore. And there is one last thing that we should do uh, that I forgot about before wrapping up the GitLab flow and that is to close out the uh, original issue that we created in the GitLab project. Now that we've synced the local repository with the remote repository, uh, let's go ahead and close out that issue. So I'm going to navigate back to GitLab and then I'll navigate to the issues section and then list. And then I'll select the issue that I created. And then I'm going to indicate in the checkbox uh, that we completed this subtask, which updates the uh, count of tasks completed. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and close this issue. So I'm gonna select close issue. In addition to closing the issue, I'm also going to mark it as done. And now that we've closed the issue that we created for this change to the readme file, we've come full circle with the GitLab flow. So congratulations on completing your first round of the GitLab flow. And in the next video, we are going to explore the CICD features of GitLab. If you'd like to learn more, be sure to follow our blog at lambdatest.com forward slash blog, as well as our Lambda Test community at community.lambdatest.com. You can also earn resume worthy Lambda Test Selenium certifications at lambdatest.com forward slash certifications. See you in the next video.